Greetings Cyber Truckers and citizens of the internet. This is Rendog coming at you from this Let's Play Euro Truck Simulator 2 series. In the previous episode we were on our way to a truck dealer to buy ourselves our very own truck. But thanks to you guys and your comments in the comment section of the previous video, um, it has come to my attention that we don't actually need to go to the dealer, that we will be automatically transported to the dealer. So <laughs> the previous drive was, there wasn't any real reason for it, but we did do a delivery. We did get a bit of cash, so that's all good. So I think what we're going to do, guys, in this episode is hit the bank and actually take this loan that we wanted to take, um, this £80,000 loan. We're going to do it. Man, 80,000 bucks into the bank, but also 80,000 pounds into debt. Let's just do, let's, let's join the rest of the world in debt, shall we? Bam, thank you for that 80 grand. That is what I'm talking about. So let's head over to the truck dealers page. And we were on our way here to Stuttgart um, in Germany. So I think if we just click on it and we don't actually have to drive to the city, we can actually just visit selected dealer. Do you really want to travel to Stuttgart and visit the majestic truck dealer? Yes, I do. Um, maybe that'll cost us to travel, but we've got 80,000 squid in the bank right now. So, you know, we can spend a little, a little freely over here. But here, there's, there's a, there's a cyber dog red truck over there. You guys see that truck over there? This tiny little thing is probably the only one we can afford. This is 78,000. How much is the cyber dog red truck? This one. 120,000. Ah, oh, sad face. Um, I think we definitely want to get the cheapest truck that we can. That's 163,000. Damn! 150,000, 123,000. This is the cheapest one we can get, right? So, I mean, can we customize configuration? Can we actually make it red? Cabin, chassis, engine, stock color. 3,328 quid to make it red. Yeah, I'm going to spend the money, man. We need a Cyberdog red truck. It's definitely worth the cash. This truck is actually really sweet also. It's kind of small and dinky. But I can dig. I can dig. All right. So that's that's everything, guys. Confirm. Purchase. Bam. Thank you for buying your first truck from us. Please come again. Well... It'll be a long time until I come again because uh, the next truck is like 123,000. Oh, we're back in London. Check, there's uh, there's the, the gherkin behind the truck over there. And man, that truck is looking pimp. It's the freaking, it's a Cyberdog truck, man. That is awesome. We need a name for this truck. I think I'm going to name this truck after my first car. This truck is going to be called Maximus. <laughs> and this is my home, is it? Oh, let's have a look at the interior, man. Looking pretty damn sweet. We've got our sweet-ass radio player up there. Is that a DVD player? Damn! Let's have a look. Ooh, we can look out of the window. Oh, man, this is awesome. Check it out. Looking pretty modern. I really like the interior. The seats are looking kind of sporty. My bed over there is looking pretty comfortable. For those long uh, truck stops over in the middle of nowhere. You know what I'm saying. Let's just start up the engine. Man, this is, listen to that puppy purr. This is epic. We got our first truck, guys. High five. Oh, this is epic. Check out the exhaust pipe, like above the, the truck there. That is so cool. Well, I am so freaking happy, man. This is epic. Okay, looks like we have to park this bad boy. Oh. So I guess this is our home, right? It's very responsive, actually. It's, it, I think because it's a smaller truck, it responds much better than those other janky-ass trucks that we've got. Press the following key to manage this garage. All right, let's manage this garage. Size tiny, trucks assigned one, daily profit 5,273 pounds. Well, that easily pays off our loan. Oh man, that is awesome. Driver manager. Oh, can we actually hire a driver? Oh, I'm the only driver. Truck manager. Let's have a look. Okay, so this is the, the, oh, this is so awesome. This is going to show us like how much money we make from this truck over time. That is very cool. All right. Well, we've got ten thousand pounds in the bank still, right? So that's good. Um, that that is at least going to cover our fuel costs and and all of that jazz. But guys, 
Um, I'm going to turn the engine off now, and I think what we need to do is get a job. Job market, right? Get hired as a professional driver. Uh, earn money for your company using your own equipment. Yeah, that's what we want to do. All right, so we are currently in London again. So I think what we probably want to do is go to Calais again or, or go to Dover. We could deliver toys to Dover for 4,351 pounds. <laughs> man, that is awesome. Yeah, let's do that, man. Our first delivery is going to be set as GPS destination. Oh, this is from this is from Southampton. Dover to Southampton. No man. Destination. Oh, so it looks like we're actually going to have to travel from London. Oh no, here we go. So London to Cambridge delivering cheese for two thousand three hundred fifty-six pounds. All of these go to, okay, why don't we go to Southampton and then we can get that job from Southampton to Dover and then we can get back into Europe. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, we're going to deliver cement to Southampton uh, from London for £3,479. Uh, that, that, that is a pretty darn good, um, yeah, that's a good fee if I do say so myself. Set GP destination. Okay, so we gotta go pick up the cement, right? Man, my <laughs> my truck yard is so oh! oh Oops! I didn't break my truck, did I? I dinged it. That that is so crazy because I already got told you guys about the, the first accident that I had and I <laughs> I had my very first accident on the very first day that I had my car. It looks like exactly the same thing has happened now. <laughs> first day of new truck, have accident, man. That's, that's just silly. Um, where, where is... Alright. Still getting used to this bad boy, man. Okay, it looks like, it looks like the fertilizer that we are delivering is actually right here to the, the right of us. So, just wait till we can cross this highway over here. Right, go! There we go. Yep, that's, that, that is where we are picking up the delivery. And we are on the left-hand side of the road again now. So this is kind of confusing. But um, I actually went on a quite a long drive a couple days ago. A drive in real life. <laughs> so, um, and it was obviously in England. So I'm kind of used to driving on the left-hand side of the road now. But, um, so my brain has adjusted from driving on the right side of the road in this game to driving on the left-hand side of the road in real life. It's kind of weird, i got to say, man. Like, this virtual driving experience sort of overlaps my real driving experience. It's, it's very weird, very weird. And when I see real trucks now, I get excited. <laughs> Press the following to view the job offer. Yeah, I will take this job. Thank you very much. And we are going to Southampton. We haven't actually been there yet, so that's going to be sweet. Um, your trailer is ready. Proceed to the loading area. Alright. We've also got a full tank of gas, but we are paying for all of our petrol now. And it's like 500 pounds to fill up a tank, at least. It's freaking crazy, man. Alright, so it looks like we have to do like a three-point turn in here, right? To get into the trailer. Get into this sweet ass. Come on, cyber truck. Bam! Oh, oops. Well, first time. I got it first time. Oh man, that is awesome. I actually did that first time. I think I definitely deserve a like for that, guys. <laughs> Right, now we got to get this thing out of here. Alright, sweet! We are on our very first real delivery with our own equipment uh, in this in Maximus, the Cyberdog truck. And this is epic. We have £80,000 to pay back though. So, in essence, the bank actually owns this truck and we don't own it at all. 
All right, well, we've got the job, right? So now all we got to do is hit the freaking highway. Awesome. This feels so good, man. This feels so good to be, like, actually working, you know, with our own goods, man. Like, it's just until we, at the moment that we pay back our 80,000 pound loan, it's just profit all the way. Come on, babe. Oh, come on, baby. Kick into full gear. Oh, man, this thing is pretty damn slow, though. Come on, sucker. Going up the hill. Come on. Oh man, Maximus Maximus isn't exactly the beefiest of trucks. Uh, it must it, it's gotta be said. <laughs> but uh look, we've got 113 miles to go to get to Southampton to, to make our very first delivery, and then from Southampton we're gonna make a delivery to Dover, and then from Dover we're gonna jump back into Europe and, and maybe try and go as far east as possible, see if we can get into Poland or something like that. You know, that that could be pretty sweet. But um, it looks like it's a beautiful freaking day. The sun is out. Um, look at this, man. England is just looking beautiful. The road looks amazing. We are on the highway. We are trucking. And I am loving this, man. Damn. Man, this is, this is epic. And um, I wanted to tell you guys about <laughs> something that happened to me once on a road trip. Well, it wasn't a road trip. So um, let, me, let, let me try to set the scene, right? I lived in a city called Johannesburg in South Africa. And I studied in uh, another town in the, the south of South Africa. Oh, I'm in the wrong lane. Oops, sorry. Sorry, oh no, that, that was actually the right lane. Um, oops, <laughs> now we're in trouble. Now we're in trouble. Um, but I I, I, my university was about a thousand kilometers from my home in Johannesburg, right? And we, I don't know what kind of loop we're gonna make here, but we have, we're onto the M25, which isn't good. We're gonna have to take the first, do the first U-turn that we come across. Um, and to get to university, I used to drive. So I didn't fly to university. There wasn't an airport in the town that I studied, but um, I used to drive there. So to drive to university was about a thousand kilometers. Oh, this actually goes to London. And to drive back from university back home was also about a thousand kilometers. So I used to do a lot of driving when I was younger, man. When I was studying at university, I drove a butt ton. Damn. Um, I loved it though, because I used to just drive by myself. Man, our truck is so, struggles up these hills so bad. Um, but I used to, yeah, I used to drive by myself, right? And I used to love that because I, I, I would take my shirt off. I would roll all the windows down. The, head, the, the wind would be blowing in my hair. I would turn up my, my sound system to full and just sing at the top of my lungs. I used to listen to like Incubus and Deftones and really sweet ass bands. And I used to sing all the way to university and all the way back. And I used to love those journeys, just traveling by myself. It was, um, really really awesome times man I love that but uh, on the way to uh, the place that I studied or my university uh, on one journey I got really really tired and what I needed to do was was I, I just could I couldn't drive anymore I, I'd been driving for about seven hours and um, I was really really tired and I decided that I would stop off in, in at, at a motel basically like at, at some at a small place in, in oh, I could have actually gone down there <laughs> Man, it's it's difficult. It's it's really hard telling you guys stories and focusing on playing this game at the same time. <laughs> so sorry, guys. We're actually just wasting fuel now, so it sucks. But um, anyway, I decided to stay over in this motel, right? And I thought, well, it's going to be cheap. It's in a small town. I'll just leave really early. You know, I'll leave at like 5 a.m. And, and get back on the road. And I'll be I'll be at university before breakfast, and I can go to the the. the you know, I can go have breakfast at the hotel, eatery, and all of that sort of stuff. So that was my plan, right? So I stopped at this motel, and it was a, a pretty small town. I mean, it was probably a town of about 2,000 people, like maximum, I would say. Um, this is definitely not right. <laughs> okay, guys, well, we're going on an extended road trip. <laughs> but hopefully hopefully this uh, hooks up somewhere um, in, the, in the distance. Maybe we can take a left or something further down here. Um, so I got to this town and I, I got into the, the hotel room. It was in a, hot, a hotel chain called Formula One. And this hotel chain is really, really dodgy. It's infamous for, you know, ladies of leisure, shall we say, and, you know, a whole bunch of other sort of dodgy jazz that you don't really want to be getting involved in. Um, but it was really, really cheap. It was probably like 10 euros to stay there, you know. Um, 
you know, equivalent of about $10. Dude, don't stop in front of me. What are you doing? Man. Butthole. Um, so I stopped there. I, I went and put all my stuff in the room. I mean, the room was terrible. It, it smelled of, like, mothballs. And it was just... It, it was nasty, man. Seriously. Absolutely nasty. And I was sitting in that room. And all they had... All that, all that was in this room was a Bible and a radio. And I was like, well... I'm not really into the Bible, and uh, there's not really much to listen on the radio. I don't really like pop music and stuff, so not really much to do here. I just, so I decided to go and explore the town, right? And uh, I decided, well, I'm going to go find a steakhouse. I'm going to hit that. I'm going to hit that steak. I'm going to have a nice juicy ass steak, some chips, a nice cold beer, and then go to sleep, and then you know hit the road early in the morning, and I'll be at university uh, before the you know before that all my friends have even finished breakfast. So I went to the steak joint. And I was sitting there eating a steak. It was a pretty good steak, but overdone. But what I didn't realize is uh, this steakhouse was, how, how do we say? It? Um, it was a steakhouse meets leisure house, if you know what I'm saying. But um, being, you know, being completely ignorant to these kind of things, I didn't actually realize that this restaurant was also uh, <laughs> a place of leisure. <laughs> and uh, while I was eating my steak, a lady came and sat down next to me and, you know, showed me the menu. Um, and it was, when she showed me the menu, I was like, um, this isn't exactly what I'm after. Or, you know, I'm, all I really want is a steak. I, I don't really want dessert, you know what I mean? <laughs> so um, I, I, I said to her, look, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm good here, man. I'm good with my steak. Um, don't worry about me. Everything's cool. And uh, I finished off my steak, paid the bill super fast, left a pretty big tip, hoping that that would be enough to keep them away from me, and uh, left the restaurant to go back to my hotel. Unfortunately, what happened was that I got trailed <laughs> by uh, this lady of leisure all the way back to my hotel, and, and I, I think she saw that as I was um, going to this hotel, this particular hotel, which was obviously a place where she frequented quite a lot, she, she just assumed that, um, you know, that I was you know, looking for some dessert, shall we say. And um, she basically followed me all the way to my room and uh, I had to actually call the security manager to, to get her out <laughs> and to get her to leave me alone. And uh, he, he, when he came to my room to help me out, he looked kind of surprised. He was like, well, <laughs> okay, this has never happened in this hotel before. <laughs> but that was crazy, man. And that was the last time that I ever stayed, ever will, ever have and ever will stay in a motel. That's for sure. That was, uh, that was some really dodgy jazz. <laughs> but guys, I think we're finally back on track now. Um, after a little bit of a detour. Um, oh wait. Were we supposed to go that way? Yeah, we were supposed to go that way. Okay, well, we're going we're gonna to get illegal up in here, man. I'm going to do a freaking U-turn. Right here on the highway while I can. Oh, incoming truck! Woo, damn! That was close. No, car, incoming car. Okay, now we can go. Hopefully we won't get fined. No fineage, please. Sweet. <laughs> that was epic. Highly frowned upon though. Uh, if I saw a truck driver doing that on the road, I would be bummed. I would, I would be angry as a driver, man. I'd be like, dude, that is not on. You do, you are not allowed to do that kind of jazz. But uh, we are back on track, man. This is sweet. All right, we are back on track. We've added another uh, about 30 miles to our journey, so that sucks. <laughs> but guys, we've come to the end of this episode. In this, in the next episode, we're just gonna uh, finish off this journey, get ourselves over to Southampton, and then take the next job so that we can get ourselves over to Dover and back into Europe. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. Hope you enjoyed the story uh, about me and the lady of leisure and the steak. <laughs> um, just a, an interesting memory that I wanted to share with you guys, but I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, you hit that freaking like button. Like, it's nobody's business. And guys, I will see you in the next episode of Let's Play Euro Truck Simulator 2. This has been Rendon, signing out. Goodbye, my friends.